You're listening to the Worlds of Robert Crichton podcast. New audio freshly delivered every week, direct from me, Robert Crichton. If you like this audio, consider becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com forward slash Robert Crichton to help support my work. And now, your podcast. You're listening to The Other Day. A story from The Other Day. About me, Robert Crichton, and my day. The Other Day. As opposed to today. It was definitely another day. The Other Day, in fact. Hence the title. The Other Day. That's what this is called, the other day. Yeah. The other day, I thought I'd go to my local Halloween Fright Night scare factory. There was nothing on television, and the prospect of being frightened in an organised way that has a rigorous health and safety regime appealed to my sense of the pointless. There's nothing like being threatened in an entirely safe way, to make drugs seem a reasonable option to life. The Halloween Fright Night Scare Factory was held in the local old building and grounds, which was sufficiently large and old to be considered frightening. I've always found new buildings terrifying, but I appreciate this is a niche concern between me, my many therapists, and the Prince of Wales. Snaking outside the Halloween Fright Night Scare Factory were hordes of young children, all dressed in the appropriate supermarket-slash-online-cheapy Halloween costume wear. It reassured me to note that these costumes, deliberately cheap, made of synthetic fibres in sweatshops around the world, were designed to be as wafer-thin as possible for a semi-official event held in late October in the Northern Hemisphere. Who says the younger snowflakes when they have to survive events like this and their subsequent exposure and probable death by hypothermia? Or maybe we're just not on schedule with global warming and the planners expected balmy weather. So difficult to tell. The assorted guides were all dressed as witches and warlocks and, probably, were all volunteers. It's a shame that the magicking realm never got around to proper union representation. I wandered from space to space, moderately enervated by people leaping out and screaming at me. It was quite comforting reminded me of hospital. Having received my quota of screaming for the day, I headed for the exit, when a ghoul leapt out at me. I'd give him six out of ten for effort. The clipboard in his hand was by far the most terrifying thing about him. Hello, said the ghoul. How was your scare today? Uh, I'm sorry, I said. Your scare? How would you rate your scare today? Would you say you were very scared, moderately scared, or not scared at all? Are you exit surveying me? I asked. If that's all right with you, sir, it won't take a moment and you could win a prize. I see. What's the most scaring thing about the Halloween Fright Night Scare Factory? Doing an exit survey for it. We get that a lot, sir, said the ghoul, chuckling to himself. So, uh, (laughs) would you be willing to do the full exit survey and be entered into the prize draw? Why not, I said. If I had anything better to do, I'd hardly be here. Excellent, sir, said the ghoul, who took a pointed step to his right and pulled a large lever on the wall, marked, I saw now, as trapdoor release, do not touch. As the floor opened up beneath me, I remembered the words my mother said to me on the subject of surveys. Fuck that, you damn soldiers. And I lost consciousness. I woke strapped down to a table, a metal table, with all the accoutrements a good maniac needs. The ghoul was there, but also a gaggle of masked figures. Congratulations, said the figures, in unison. You have won first prize in our Halloween draw. What have I won, I asked as I tried to break free from the metal restraints. "'You have won the fright of your life,' said the ghoul, "'the most horrifying of horrors too horrible to horror the public with.' "'You can't frighten me,' I said. "'We shall see,' 
said the masked ones. And so began the procession of horrifying horrors. First, they threatened me with locking access to my Netflix account. And I remained strong. Then they threatened me with a bar on access to all artisan coffee shops for life. And I held firm. When they said that all Wi-Fi hotspots would be dead to me, I thought I might crack, but I told them to bring it on. And they did. Blow after blow fell across my fragile sense of self. No one will follow you on social media, not even bots. No more hummus. No more podcasts. No more signing online petitions and self-righteously humble bragging about it afterward. Because nobody cares. <laughs> no more, I screamed. I give in. But no, there was worse to come. The figures in masks picked me up and placed me in a chair in front of a long conference table. What is this? I asked. This is the final horror, the ghoul announced as the masked ones took chairs themselves and circled the table. What is the worst that can happen to anyone? he asked. Stripped of your toys, stripped of your distractions, we will make you sit through a parish council meeting. <laughs> no! I screamed. Anything but that! And, the ghoul continued slamming a pad of paper before me, you will do the minutes. The masked figures all started speaking at once, and the ghoul handed me a large ceremonial pen with an old-fashioned nib. You can make this stop, the ghoul whispered in my ear. You can make this stop any time. Just say the word and you will be free. What do you want from me? I begged. A favourable review on TripAdvisor. <gasps> no, anything but that. Just one line and a few stars and it's all over. Well, I th there are more circles, I said. Everyone thinks of voting systems as being stars. I think it's to do with the owl marketing thing, to look like owl eyes. Just vote, the ghoul said, slamming a tablet onto the table. I logged on. But maybe it was some small spark of rebellion, maybe the suspicion that I, I wasn't getting away. Or maybe the knowledge that review sites are too easy to game. I couldn't resist giving the Halloween Fright Night Scare Factory only three circles. The ghoul gave me a pitying look. Then this meeting will never end, he said, and the masked figures began talking animatedly about hitches. There was only one escape. They had only tied my feet to the chair, so I wedged the pen into a crack in the table surface, stood upright, and threw myself bodily onto the upright nib point. The masked figures pulled me back, but soon saw that the pen, inflicted wound, was mortal. They carried me out of the basement and threw me into the high street just in front of the long queue. The concerned people of the village did the only logical thing to do in that situation. Applauded politely and took photos to post on Instagram. As I lay there, being politely stepped over for access to the Halloween Fright Night Scare Factory, stripped of all I once had, the blood pouring from my chest, I felt something cold and wet falling on my face. Tears from a concerned citizen, perhaps. No, I realised. No. They weren't tears. They were snowflakes. Millions of them. 
And that, dear listener, is how I died. Happy Halloween. You've been listening to an The Other Day Story, written and performed by Robert Crichton. Other stories of my grisly demise are available while stocks last. To support this and other podcasts from the worlds of Robert Crichton, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Robert Crichton. And for as little as only a dollar a month, exchange rates vary, you can get additional bonus features and audio stuff.